All right, check, test, test. Oh, we got Chuck Yeah. <laughs> Another time. Oh, uh, make sure they mix it in there. <sighs> All right, here we are. Uh, Strong and Petty Chilling. Podcast, episode 53. No, 54. Holy smokes. 54 here at Iron Age Gym in the west end of Winnipeg. Um, I'm here with owner of Training Grounds Gym and one of my, or not one of my, the only co runner, co conspirator. Of Strong Manitoba, Devin Co- Penner. Co-chef. Co-chef, yeah, two and chefs in this kitchen. That's stew it. we're brewing up. <laughs> yeah, this, this nasty, <laughs> sweaty stew. My God is out! And to be alive if you can't do that. It's not something you can just make up about yourself. You have to you have to be able to show that you are as strong as you say you are, You have, if, especially if you're competing in Strongman. Um, we're here on the, on the week of, uh, the week of what's kind of like the, the beginning of the real strongman season here in Manitoba, the, the, the training grounds, novice showdown, April 6th, 11 a.m. in St. Malo at, uh, Devon's gym. Yep. Looking forward to it. Yeah. It's gonna be really sick this year. We've had, I, I just counted with my, my brother asked how many people we have. And I was like, I don't know. And so I counted the list and we're like 36 people. It's a lot of people do. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. And so we got, we got a really good, uh. A really like it's, it's gotten bigger every year, and eventually we have to kind of reach a cap on that, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, hey, man, until it happens, thirty six people. Yeah. In a twenty five hundred square foot facility full of gym equipment. Hell yeah. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little. I'm really hoping that it's really because like okay, I'm gonna check something here. So it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be fifteen degrees. Fifteen degrees. Okay, so we can probably open the doors. Open the open. Door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll be able to spill out a little bit, which will be nice. I was even thinking of running the farmers outside, but the problem with that is. Uh, everybody, because I got limestone, right. everybody who trips in that white limestone all sure. through my gym, like, no, sure. no, we're going to stay indoors. That's what I was going to say, too. If you're coming to watch the training grounds competition, which I strongly encourage that you do, yeah. please take your damn shoes off at the front door. Oh, yeah. Because that's going to that's gonna yeah. be, if you haven't been to training grounds, it's uh, the it's like a gravel. What, it's right? all limestone. Limestone, right. Yeah. So it's uh, it's uh it tends to get a little messy when it's that first thaw of the season. So yeah. make sure you guys respect the gym and respect the space. I don't want to see anybody. And uh, there is somebody that I'm thinking of specifically in mind who last year traipsed through with some fucking muddy boots. Oh, yeah, they did. We don't want that again. We don't want that again, especially people who should know better. Um, We did a bunch of renovations. Um, Actually, I got guys in there last night, night before, tonight, last week. So I rented a bunch just to try making more room. Because you're, because you're, okay, so for anybody who hasn't been to training grounds right now, it's sort of like, it's a, it's a big gym space, but it's sort of like an L shape right now. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a 40 bay shop, but the front section the front uh, 400 square feet or 500 square feet is was actually a two-story apartment. Right. I had a renter in there. Right. Uh, so it's got a kitchenette upstairs. So that was one washroom office. Then you go through a doorway into the locker room, which was 8 by 10. Yeah, very eight small by, space. 8 by 12, yeah. something yeah. like that. Then you go through another opening into the gym. So right. now I gutted that locker room. Oh, that's good. I it's gone. That's smart. Yeah. yeah. I gutted the office. Yeah. Um, when you come in, wash and dryer is gone. That whole shelving system is gone. So you walk in now, you got lockers on the right, lockers on the left. I closed the doors off, made a new opening. Lock room's gone. All the you, cardio. You've already done all this? Yeah. Holy yeah. Shit. In the last week and a half. Because <laughs> I was just there and none of this was yeah, even no, started. Yeah, no, it's just so. been the last week and a half. Holy fuck. Got it all that. I had electricians there yesterday, plumbers there yesterday. The toilet, we had to redo all the plumbing for the toilet in the, in the gym. Yeah. Because it's one of those toilets that pumps. 10 feet vertically, 40 right. feet over, down in my septic. Right, right, right. Because I can't hammer out the floor because I got floor heating. Right. So I had him there yesterday. He finished that up. Um, so that's good to go because it was stinking there the last couple of days. <laughs> man. Like in the gym or just in that space? In the gym. Really? Oh, oh man. Oh, because the septic fumes. I had, I cut the pipes. And I drained them all. The and Penner the, family septic tank. Is the not sewer drained down are. onto my head, down my face, through my beard. Oh, no. I literally, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was so gross. That's just fucking horrible. pouring onto my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's this is like a life, a day in the life of Devin Penner, ladies yeah. and Just that's yeah. uh, it's entrepreneur. A, yeah, yeah, it's always something. Uh, we're actually we're gonna make some changes here too right away. We can. I don't know if you can see from here from the camera or not, but there's like I see Trevor bending over at the waist. Trevor bending over his little <laughs> blue ass there. Um, there's that giant AC unit thing that's just like never worked. Been here for as long as we have. We like to get rid of that. And then we're like that's just a small thing. Yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna knock out this next office over here too and expand our space into there too a little bit. And this way. This way, this office over here. We're going to keep this, this office because this is the podcast zone. This is the zone. Yeah, this is a very important place where we couldn't possibly yeah. do this anywhere else. So, <laughs> uh, But this is going to – this will stay the same. But we're going to make some pretty big changes here. So I'm, I'm excited for that too. I'm excited to see what you guys are changing it's, over there. Well, because I bought some new equipment. and Yeah. So now for Saturday, um, I don't know what time you guys are coming. We have to, I got everyone coming at 9 in the morning. Need, yeah. A bunch of my – we're, we're 
I already have the squat racks unbolted. So all the squat racks are going outside in the yard. They're right. all going in the driveway. Right. <laughs> uh, inverse, whatever is on wheels, whatever equipment I have on wheels, Get out of there. the Bell Steel uh, GHR inverse or reverse hyper. Right. Outside in the dirt. Right. Um, everything <laughs> everything is going outside. Hammer strength machines that are somewhat light, outside. Yeah. Um, so we're going to open up at least, I think, 800 square feet to people stand in. Nice. Because last year we had, people there were hang, people hang, hang the sitting on top like, of my equipment. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we want, and we're live streaming. Yes. So we need to have a place for that. Yeah, we want to have a nice a nice straight line for um, the live streaming. So it's going to be a lot. A lot that'll lot be set up, I think, on top of that, hoist, that new piece right down the turf. Yeah, nice. Um, I, to be honest, man, we're, we're Wednesday. I still haven't finished making. I haven't even started making the sleds for Saturday. Well, I have my sleds. Whatever I can but do. But I don't like me. the fact when we're because we're training with them. When you throw the sandbag, you can puncture the sandbag on the top. Of my He's got that part. Yes. Uh, prong. So I might take two of the sleds I made last year with the grinder today. Cut those rods right off. Right. Out of a two by six frame, learning from the Arnolds. Yeah. With some extra GRKs, I might just make a box. Right. Uh, for them just to throw into and bolt the box to the sled and just be done with it. These are the things that, like, yeah. I, I, when I say that Devin's the man when it comes to doing this kind of shit, like, <laughs> that's the that's stuff that we're getting done at the 11th hour, the, yeah. we, the week of the competition. And that's typical of me, leave it to the 11th hour. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we got lots, we got lots going well, on. Well, I kept rolling in here today. We're, you know, we were supposed to record Monday. We're, we're now Wednesday. Yeah. Um, just because life. Yeah. Yesterday didn't work. Monday didn't work. Shit happens. I'm rolling in. Okay, we got, we got a one hour block. Basically, Not yeah. Not 55 minutes we have. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm rolling in. I'm getting the parking lot. My worker calls me. Hey, one of my trailers is not even that old. Just lost a tire. It went sailing past me down the perimeter, over the over there into the oncoming traffic, over there and into the next oh, ditch. Oh wow! Really? Yeah, just missed a vehicle. So, Holy lady, fuck. yeah. So, I'm supposed to be in here. I'm like, so I'm on the phone, with Dean. I'm like, hey, just take some tire straps, strap the axles up, pull the other tire. We still got one axle. You're good. Seven thousand. There's nothing on the trailer. Well, five hundred pounds. I like limp that sucker back to the shop, drop it off, fleet brake, get it fixed. Grab. We have five flat deck. Grab another flat deck. Continue deliveries. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to navigate this shit, right? Like, Holy it's, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of a so now we're behind, but it's, it's there's nothing that comes. Uh, you, that's how important you guys are. Is that Dean almost <laughs> died on the highway? We still <laughs> we still got here to, to right to do this podcast, yeah, and we even put a model of him up here too. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Big Dean there. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it was, I was gonna, we were going to talk a little bit about like I, I was hoping that we'd have a little more information, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be too much about your your, MRI. your torn pecker there. Yeah, so I mean, I I called them Monday morning because I got the MRI. So last week we recorded Tuesday, I think. I think so. Yeah, so I had MRI Wednesday. They got me within 24 hours. Boom, in for the MRI. Which is amazing. Which is crazy for yeah. Canada. Yeah. Really cool. Got in. Of course, they put me in the Pan Am machine. Now, anybody who doesn't know Manitoba, the Pan Am MRI is one of the smallest MRIs the province I has. I did it one time, too, and it was brutal. <clears throat> I, uh, that was the MRI that caused me, that triggered the claustrophobia. I was never claustrophobic. Sure, yeah. I can believe that. So I walk in. I'm like, oh, this one again. So they called me at 10 a.m. They're like, you have to be at 12. And I'm like, I don't have drugs. So I like call Sage Creek Medical. I'm like, it's my family doctor. I'm like, I need drugs. She's like, well, your doctor's not in. I'm like, I don't care if someone's giving me drugs. I need, I need drugs. <laughs> I can't get in this machine. I have to have MRI. So I had to drive across Winnipeg, get to there. I had limited time. And my partner was on holidays last week. So I'm like trying to get this all done while he's, and I don't want to bother him on his holidays. We kind of have an agreement. Like unless the company's burning, right. don't call each Leave other. Leave him alone, yeah. Yeah, enjoy your holidays. We work hard, got to play hard. So I, I get over there. He gives me two lorazepam's. I'm like, Doc, man, I'm a big dude, like, <laughs> and I'm a pussy. You got a fucking handful of these <laughs> yeah, motherfuckers. Like, I need more than two. He's like, that's all we give. Oh, man, all right. All right whatever, man. You know, I'm just, and I'm like, I'm praying. I'm literally praying the whole way. I'm like, man, man, God, if, if you're there, man, this is the time, <laughs> baby. You're like, you know, I believe in you. I, I talk about you a lot. You know, help me out here. I, I really hype you up yeah, a lot of like, people. I hype you a lot on my podcast, which reaches 400 people a week. <laughs> And I'm like, so I get to this place and I, I take these, they're like, oh, it kicks in in five or 10 minutes. We gave you the fast acting. All right. Okay. So I take these things, get in the room and then the heart rate's up already. And I'm like, oh no, I got to get. So I go there and there and they're like, okay, it's really cold in here today. So keep your socks on. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Like it. I run really warm. No, keep socks on. All right. So I lay down this thing and they, they strap this big camera to my chest. So I'm now I'm ready freaking out because I didn't know I had to have a big thingy all over me. Okay. They have my arms pinned to my side. No, Devin, you can just like, are you okay? I'm like, no, I'm not okay. I'm claustrophobic and this machine sucks. But I'm like, we have to do this. They slide me in, that machine hits me in the shoulders right away, and it just yeah. folds me like a pretzel. And I'm just like, and they put a cloth over my eyes, and I'm like, okay, are you okay? I'm like, nope, but let's just let's let's, let's do this. We got well, how long? Twenty two minutes? They're like, yeah, roughly, because I roughly know how I've been in a lot of MRIs already. Yeah, yeah. Get in that machine, and and I'm just like, they're like, the first one is four and a half minutes. Fair enough. So I start counting in my head four and a half minutes. <laughs> one Mississippi. And I like I make it to like ten, 
and I'm already squeezing that ball. Like, yeah. get me out of here. But yeah. I don't, don't, no, and I'm like, I'm squeezing it, and I'm not squeezing it. I'm squeezing it, I'm not squeezing it. And I'm like, oh, you can do this. I'm like, no, you're going to die. No. Nope. And then I'm like, if you die, you're dead, and it's over. So you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> it literally yeah. telling myself that. That'll be the end of it. Yeah, if you die in this thing, it's over, right? You're yeah. just done with. So I make it about halfway through. I have that ball squeezed like four or five times, but not enough that they're going to pull me out. Like, I'm just like, mm. my legs are twitching, and you can't move. Like, my foot's going nuts. Sweat is just pouring into my eyes, and I'm like, I don't know whether I'm crying or whether my I'm sweating that much. So, like, uh, okay, we're, we're, we're done the first set of pictures. Are you okay? I'm like, don't pull me out. Like, I just need, I just need 30 seconds. So, they will pull me out of that thing. Like, you can't move. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, well, you need to clean this up. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not pointing. I'm like, my, my face. You got to clean my face up. And I whipped my socks off my feet. I'm like, just too hot in here for one. <laughs> so they cranked the fans up. And I'm like, you told me it was cold. It's not. And I'm like, kind of getting mad. Like we just didn't want to see your fucking feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, are you okay? I'm like, I don't know whether I'm crying or whether I'm sweating, but like, I'm yeah. really. I'm, I'm, they're like, you can make it. I'm like, yeah, but wipe my face. So she's like, wiping it. I'm like, no, no, like, get in there. She starts like, I'm like, dig into my eyeballs a bit. Like, they're sweating there. She's like, kid, this isn't a spa, man. And I'm like. <laughs> well, you and I both have bulldogs. And it's yeah. Like, it's probably just like that. You're to get into the crevices and into the cracks and all the. I'm like, dig into my eyeballs. So she's like, digging in and wipes my face, gets the sweat off. And I'm like, hey, leave the towel off. She's like, no, you can't make it without the towel. I'm like, then put the towel back on my face. <laughs> so I put the sweat back fuck. on. Yeah. I'm like, are we half done? She's like, oh, we're half done. I'm like, oh, well, that was a long four and a half minutes. So in my head, I'm like, okay, I got another 11 minutes. Get back in the machine, and it's just like, <sighs> like the belly's just flowing. And I'm like, no, we can do this. I'm just like, I'm literally praying. And I got my Bible study group by a text. I'm like, hey, I'm going to the MRI. They're like, oh, don't worry. What's your MRI? I'm like, exactly at one o'clock or 12 30. Like, we'll make sure we're praying at 12 30 for you, buddy. <laughs> like, like, and I'm like, and I felt kind of calm. And I'm like, I don't know if someone's praying for me, if I'm praying or if something's praying or if I'm dying or the M meds are kicking in the last five minutes it's of this all, MRI. It's all everything together, baby. Yeah. yeah. So I made it through barely. I got out of there. Soaked through my gown and sweat. Their whole bed soaking wet. Like <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So, anyways, long story. There's a 12 minute story in my mind. <laughs> Call them on Monday. You got my results. Yeah. Legacy, and they're usually really good. Yeah, yeah. Your results are in. I'm like sweet. I don't think it's t- torn tendon. I, I have a little bit of bruising on my bicep and in my armpit. Like nothing like Heinemann has. Or you you watch that one guy. Uh, the picture over there at um, Scott. Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn. Like, yeah. I'm like, I have none of that. There's right. no way this tends I just tore some muscles. Big deal. Right. Call me. Got my results. Yeah. Okay. I said, uh, what are they? Just tell me. Can you email them to me? Like, I just need to know whether I need to start my rehab protocol today. What am I all shooting in this thing? Right. Like, I've already right. ordered all the peptides. Like, right. I need to know. You have to speak to the doctor. We don't send results. No problem. Get him to call me. When can he call me? April 10th. That's so frustrating. I'm it's, like. Which is, which is so, which is weird it's like, like you got me an appointment within yeah. 12 hours you got me an mri 24 hours after my appointment so in 36 hours i seen the doctor right. and had an mri from the mri date you want me to wait 14 days for my results that's crazy and i'm like well, just call me like she's like call. yeah she's I mean? like yeah. well he has time april 8th which is next monday he'll call you april 8th and discuss your results it's like, well, that's two so days i was already back I on guess. the bench like, i was already back uh, on the bench on monday <laughs> and uh, i'm doing range of motion work how's like, it feel you know what the, like i really honest and I honestly feel like the powers are to still bench three or 400 pounds. Really? Like, I really feel, I grabbed the bar on my kit. Like, I'm just, I was doing just a 10-pound or 5-pound bar. Just movement. Because I've been using that uh, Beamer machine I told you about. I think mm-hmm. I told you about that. So, people know I bought this Beamer machine, B-E-M-E-R. It's like a micro frequency machine. I paid a lot of money for it. Increases microcirculation. And I've, I've been using that. There's a blue light therapy and a red light therapy. I've been using the one on my, on my pec uh, every night. For 36 minutes, I leave it on there, and my muscles are actually twitching underneath this light. I can, mm. they're moving, and which is crazy. And I've got full range of motion. Sweet. Pain's minimal. Like yeah. if I do something, it's pretty rough. Right, but right, like right. it pains minimal. I got on the bench, grabbed the bar, felt my right pec. Okay, that's how pec feels. In here, I got a, I got a hole somewhere's in here. There's an armpit. There's a hole. So there's some muscle missing. Right. But bar to the chest, up, nice and controlled. If I control the movement. Almost no pain. So maybe like a low grade tear. Then? I think it's a grade one tear. Yeah, that would be nice. Like I heard a tear, I felt tear. I just, I'm glad it's not a tendon. I don't believe it's a tendon. Well, I don't believe I like, need surgery. Like, like you finish the press and everything, yeah. and you're not so you're not experiencing a lot of no, comfort or pain. No, or I've whatever. got some like, pain. I sleep maybe. Um, backhand in the wife's a little harder. Because <laughs> yeah, like, I usually back her in the left. Harder, but yeah. not impossible. Not impossible. <laughs> she still uh, she still knows her place. When I when I got my <laughs> MRI done, I had to, it was on my tricep, so I had to lay like this. Which you I can't, can't even, lay I like can't that. even do it right now, but it was like. Luckily, I was a little more flexible back then, but I had to lay like that for, you know, whatever it is, like 20 minutes or whatever. Are you claustrophobic? No, I'm not claustrophobic, really, but I was just, like, very sore and uncomfortable, and it was just, like, I remembered it it feeling kind of like, um, 
I don't know if you ever seen like the the music video for Metallica's one, yeah, where the guy wakes up after like a he takes like a shelling in like in a war, and he has like no arms and no legs, and he can't see, and he can't, he, he never knows if he's like, awake or asleep or whatever. That's kind of what it felt like, where I was like, I have no idea like how long it's been or like yep. what's or how like uh, if, if if I'm dozing off or if I'm awake or whatever, because it's just like a dark light or, or like a dark thing around me. And I'm in this incredibly contorted position and no idea, no and sense you didn't of time freak or anything. Out. I didn't really freak. I, it doesn't really bother me that that's much. Th- like that stuff used to never bother me. I could climb underneath. Yeah. I'd go underneath houses where I was just on my belly and I was pinned against the joist. Wouldn't bother me. I feel me. like I would. I feel like that might bother me. Didn't honestly. fizz me. Like yeah. doing work like that, climbing into stuff, never right. bothered me. And then just the fact that I felt I couldn't get out, it was out of my control. Right. I just feel like when I'm in there, maybe, I'm maybe it's out of my is. control. Yeah, maybe that's and I'm a is. control freak. Yeah. So I maybe. need to be in control of everything. It's probably more that than the yeah. actual claustrophobia is that you just don't, you can't decide when it's over. That's yeah. And I'm just like yeah, it's it's so stupid. And I was like, I was glad I did it. The drugs then kicked in when I got to my office. Right. Because I got to my office and I'm just like You're struggling chilling. at my desk. <laughs> and I'm like, so I'm literally, I'm, I'm slamming double espressos while on the route. Like, I, I got to stay awake, man. Like, to combat the lorazepam <laughs> yeah. with espressos. <laughs> I actually put an espresso machine in my office this morning, a new one. Nice. Right beside my printer. Beautiful. <laughs> so I got a mini fridge, an espresso machine. I got everything in my office ready. That's yeah. amazing. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> I mean, it seems like we're hopefully heading in the right direction with the I pack. At least, so. I mean, like, just yeah. the fact, like just like looking at you here, like you're not moving around like somebody who no, has like, like I've serious. Got, like this hurts. Yeah, I can do this. There's some slight pain. Like when I say the bruising is minimal, like like there's nothing. There's nothing inside here. A little yelling if I go down here. Right. It's like I'm glad it's not. I thought it was worse because the way it sounded and felt like it just continued tearing, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, ooh, maybe yeah. I should have stopped when the bar hit my chest, but. Shit you, happens, you man. Would never do that. Worse shit's happen. Better people. There you go. Yeah. Um. Oh, I wanted to get into a little bit too because we, uh, so we have this novice competition coming up. We have thirty six yeah. people. I think we said yeah, thirty six people who have never competed before. One pulled out yesterday. I uh, hurt his knee. Oh no, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah but do you want to say who? Or is it I forget. Oh well, that's too bad. I'm sorry to hear that. For but I've been texting with him a bit, so wherever yeah. that is, I hope your knee gets better. Yeah. Um, but we have a bunch of people who are not new to competing necessarily, although a lot of them are, yeah. but definitely all new to strongman. So I wanted to get a little bit into, um. What like what can one expect? Because I think that that our shows are a pretty good example of what you can expect at at shows where it's like, you know, we've been to shows both of us. I think where you're like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> like you're just trying to figure out like who you even need to talk to, yeah, or when things start, or like I thought we were having a rules meeting, or you know, yeah. all kinds of shit like that. So I'll say that ours are pretty are pretty standard and pretty good in that way. So yeah, if you're if you're somebody who's coming to uh, a Manitoba strongman show. Give them like the the walk through the day of. So if if we list an event starts at eleven, it starts at eleven. It starts at eleven. Yeah. Uh, meaning athletes meeting is fifteen minutes before. Yeah. Ten forty five. Ten forty. Yeah. Um. You know, always the, what you want to do with shows is show up at least. I always say with forty five minutes an hour before. I think I think an hour is completely yeah. reasonable because yep. you're just you're just gonna feel more comfortable if you're just there and you're. Si- there is also a time where you can kind of get to be there for too long. Yes. Yeah. And now you're thinking about it too much and you're watching everyone come in and yes. you're just like getting anxious and getting weird. Yep. But if you're there for an hour, you have time, and like that, like I said, that includes the rules meeting. Yep. That includes um, just like getting yourself warmed up and all that stuff. So really, it's only fifteen to twenty minutes where you're just sitting. And there the doing only thing nothing. to warm up with now is bands because the racks are going to be outside. Right. Um. So that's a bit of a downside to, to it. But it's it's a light enough show. You got bands. We got Theraguns. You got right. you got the, the normal stuff that you have. Yeah. You know, you show up. Show up. Athletes meeting ten forty five. We'll start. We'll try to start exactly at eleven, especially for live stream. It'll be close. Yeah. Um, within within five minutes, it yeah. won't be any longer than five yeah. minutes after eleven o'clock. Um, just you know, there'll be some logistics stuff, but you're going to show up early. We'll go over all logistics stuff beforehand. Yeah. We'll have all our volunteers there beforehand, yeah. and Thrones will be there nice and early to set up all his so stuff. We got too. great lanes coming up from Roblin to yeah. help. Corey's coming in. Dan's going to come. Dan's coming. Yeah. Uh, Pat, I'm sure. Uh, Pat, right? yeah, Pat's yeah. in. Uh, Gordon Jocelyn there to help. Great. And that's Gordon's amazing. bringing in all the sand bakes. I didn't have to remake them. Nice. So See, I think that's that's great too. Is that what you'll what you will notice as somebody who's new to like, especially it's like it kind of goes like competition by competition. So let's say for a novice competition, you're gonna see the people who are doing the uh, the SCC regional ones and stuff. They're helping out. Yes. And then when you go to those SCC regional ones, you're gonna see let's say like me and Dan and you and guys, like guys who are who yeah. are. Uh, for you, it's you're the. I mean, you're the fucking promoter, but yeah. the guys who are at that next level are going to be there, like lending a hand and making sure yeah. everyone's doing well and stuff there too. Yeah. So it's, there's always going to be someone like there who's a, a friendly face or someone who's yeah. be willing to help you out if you have any questions or whatever. Because I really think that that's like, um, I know that it can be kind of imposing in a couple of ways because just you know I'm a big guy. Dan's yeah. a big guy who's not who's not the most like. Uh, extroverted person, right? Like yeah. he's like he's once you know him, he talks, but he's not like gonna come to you and be like, "Hey, how you doing?" You know what I mean? So it can be hard to uh, approach someone like that. Yeah. And also, I know that it can be kind of awkward when you're like, you come in and it's just like, 
man, everyone here knows each other except for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're really one of those outs, like, those people who are brand new to the strongman scene, you're going to feel like, wow, everybody here is friends, and I'm kind of the odd person out. Well, it's like, well, the good news is is that it's only a matter of time before you're in the circle, too. Well, you that, know? Like, that's the thing about our community is, is we try to make no one feel that way. Right. And I noticed that. But there's uh, just, like, that, that normal feeling of walking into a building where it's like everyone here knows each other, and I don't know anybody. That's how know? it is in jiu-jitsu for me. Sure. Yeah, I absolutely. haven't been there much. I went there last night to drop off Morgan. Right. And I still feel like I'm an outsider. Sure. So that's actually, and I'm a guy because I've made my life so comfortable. If I right. feel like an outsider, I'll never show up again. Right. So I'm just, because I don't need to at my age. It's, it's something that I forget yeah. about because for me, it's like I, I would feel comfortable going into any gym anywhere in the world. Yeah. And just being like, hey, I'm here visiting and I'm kind of, I came for a lift or whatever. Yeah. Whereas I forget that for a lot of people, like walking into a gym, especially when like training grounds, that's like a, like, you know, a, a serious gym, like yep. quote unquote, right? Full of serious people. And and when you look around and you see a guy like Pat and Dan and, and me and you yeah. and guys who are just like, it's like, it's like, oh, these guys are, these guys are serious about this shit. And I'm a bit of a drill sergeant on, right. on yeah. game day. And, and Jenea, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. there's, there's people there that are going to be intimidating to you, yeah. at, at least at first blush. Yeah. And then you'll kind of realize that it's not so bad. But, that's that's something that I would really encourage too is just like when you get there, if you're somebody who doesn't know the people around you, just start walking around shaking hands. Yep. Like really, just like to anybody that you see. Yeah. Especially people who are wearing the shirts. Like all the volunteers, I think, will have. Volunteer I, I shirts. might have to give mine up. I missed a shirt of the shirt wearer. Uh-oh. I might have to donate mine to someone. We'll, we'll, we'll see. see. But you'll yep. recognize Devin. Yeah. So if if you're <laughs> if you see anybody who's wearing the a, a competitor shirt, anybody who's wearing a volunteer shirt, or just anybody at all, just walk around just saying, "Hey, what's up? I'm Tyler. I'm you know whoever." Like just say. It's, yep. It really goes a long way into making so that everybody just like, new to the scene, yeah, yeah, like just so everyone kind of has an idea of who you are, and that way it's like, let's say later on when it's like, okay, uh, competitor X is up, who's X, where's X, and we and we don't know. I'm like, yeah. Okay, I know that guy. I'm gonna go find him. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's just like it's, it creates well, that and, connection. And you know? people are into, and people do follow. I have a prime example. This yesterday, I was at Sutman King Steinbeck, yeah, and uh, picking up some stuff for the gym, and uh, me and Dale already walking there. I'm wearing my trainer gown sweater. Just getting some stuff we need, and this kid's just kind of looking at me in the corner of his eye, and it's looking at the corner of his eye. Him and his girlfriend both, and they're not talking to me. And I was just, I just noticed because my wicked peripherals. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. and he's like, "Hey, are you? Uh, do you go to training grounds?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Are you the owners?" Yeah, we are. Oh, he's like, "Man, I, I follow you guys. I just, I love Strongman." Oh, I said, are you, are you competing? No, I haven't competed. And his girlfriend's like, this, "He loves Strongman. He follows your gym, and he really wants oh, to come out so there great. one day and train." I'm like, "Why well, are you?" I said, "What are you doing this Saturday?" I'm coming to your comp. Tremendous, oh, amazing. Yeah, I'm like, you're coming. He's like, oh, no, I'm coming. He's like, I just, I was, I was, he, he wouldn't even talk to me. His girlfriend's like, you better say something to him. <laughs> he sat in behind her and she's like, tell him, you better talk to him. Tap him on the shoulder. I'm like, I'm nothing special, man. I just want to fall gym. That's funny. But this guy was just this kid, young guy, kid looked like early 20s, maybe late teens, early 20s. And his girlfriend wants to get into powerlifting. Um, typical M- MPA, she's a little Filipino girl. Classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's like, I follow these other Filipino girls. I'm like, that makes sense because yep. there's a lot of them in MPA, which is great. And uh, so he's Strong actually representation. Yeah, he's. I told him ten bucks drop in, come down. I said we train these days generally events. Come down, I'll show you all the ropes. No, yep. no problem. Just pay a drop in fee. Come on in. So he's coming Saturday. He's. Ex- but just Tremendous. like that, so we're between the podcast and our Instagram pages, we're reaching right. So and if, and new if he's if he's listening or watching this, like come say what's up. Come yeah. Say hi. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's so. If we're talking about just sort of like the the hey how are you's of the whole thing, like that's kind of what I would recommend is just like being. You know, you don't have to be going and being everyone's best friend, but it's yeah. gonna, it's going to be in your in your best interest just to be generally friendly, which I'm sure everybody will. And I know going back to that, you said what to expect game day, and I, my mind's like a rabbit always. Show up, eleven o'clock start date. We do the athletes meeting. Continue on from there. Biggest thing: make sure because we're always going to have someone on the mic, which will be you, saying this guy's in the hole, or these two are in the hole, or these two are in deck, these two are in the hole. Yeah. Meaning, thirty six people in a small gym. I, yes. This is. I have a time belt. Like, I'm hoping we can get this done in four hours because I don't run a show for four hours. I get really mad. But it's tight. It oh, is going to be I, tight. I, I think we can get it in three. Oh, it, I, I'm doing the math. It's going to be tough. I think we can do it. I, oh, I think we can do yeah, it. Yeah, maybe. If I can, it's, <laughs> it's going to be, unless people are failing and I can shut their events on. Oh, you're done at 25 seconds. Yeah, let me pull that back for you. <laughs> like, it's going to be one of those. Um, but be ready. That's the biggest thing to make a, a yep. show run smooth. Yep. Have your wrist straps on for your pressing yep. event. Um, have your belts at least notched ready that you only got to pull one notch have your salts ready if, you, if you're taking salts just have all your gear ready that yeah. when it's time you're on deck you know hey man i'm getting hyped up pep. the events get set you're on your event right that's how we run it fast yep that's um, I, th- I think that csm was the first competition that i did where because we did a squat and you could wrap your knees and stuff right or for, or for any event really where they were like just take your time and tell us when you're ready that doesn't happen in competitions that it, not no 
because it's because you know CSM it's it's a different kind of beast than what we're and doing. And it's televised here. too, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just like but they but they want you know they it's they know that it can be dangerous really if yes. you're not 100 percent ready for it, right? So when with all that being said, like nobody likes the guy who makes everybody wait while they're standing at the log putting on their wrist wraps and then walks up and takes a zero. Put, put, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but like doing up your belt, chalking up your hands, having your moment. Like I get it. I know it's. I know yeah. that it's a cool thing. Whatever, right? But and you know, there's gonna be times where guys are like, "Shit, I didn't know that I was," or whatever. That, yes, that obviously that happens. happens. Yeah. But I'm saying, if if you know that you're standing, if you're standing there waiting to go, yeah. just you're gonna be the most popular guy in the whole place. Yeah. Popular guy or girl in the whole place. If when they say your name, you just walk up and you're ready to rock. Yep. Like that's gonna make you uh, a very likable person. And we we have none of that in the mental scene. Maybe that has happened where guys like, "Oh, I'm not ready," and they never do it again. Right, because yeah. they know. Hey, it seems we got a really good senior match with everybody contributing and volunteering and helping. Yeah. And um, I think Mara's coming out to help too. If I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. If I, if, if I am wrong, you should come and help. Yeah, come out, Mara. Um, <laughs> but uh, like everybody in the scene just knows yeah. we like to run a fast show. Yeah. They want a fast show. Yeah. Like when you and then when you get to say shows like. Um, I would say like kind of like the starting point being like Manitoba Strongest Man. Yeah. And then westerns and then whatever, where it's a little bit more of like, it's uh What's the word I'm looking for? It's more like, of a spectacle. It features the athletes a yeah, little more. It's more of a spectacle. Yeah, yeah. The weights are heavier. Yeah. It's invite only on a lot of these shows. So it's so it's it's it's, it's open too. Yes. So there's less time to to change things and and whatever. Yeah. So you can take a little more time with things. But again, even at westerns, like you don't want to be the guy who is like they're like, all right, the next up on the log, Tyler Sigurdsson, and I walk up with my with my belt over my shoulder and my wrist wraps over my other shoulder, and I walk up and start doing all that stuff. Yeah. Like, you really just don't want to be that guy. Yeah. So. Being prepared is going to be a huge deal for this. So let's let's talk um, kit a little bit for this then. So let's say um, we've picked pretty rudimentary events with like power stairs being the only one that's sort of an out of the ordinary one. Yeah. So let's talk kit. A and to bit. get that at your first show is pretty cool. It is pretty fucking cool. And yeah. I think and I, th- and I think that guy's. A it was at my first show. Really? Oh, Te- wow, Teddy really? Bob's. I just built those stairs for Brent. Oh. It was at my first show. Because I think that guys will guys and girls who do this competition will go. Some of them will go many years before they ever do a power yeah. stairs again. Because I I only did mine for the first time last year. Yeah. But, but so if we're talking log, the very obvious ones would be you want if you wear lifters or whatever shoe. Well, just like I, what I, I do is I start from the ground up. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wherever shoes that I'm wearing. If it's lifters or chucks or whatever it might be, barefoot. I don't care. Um, my next thing is whether I wear if you wear knee sleeves. Like I I lay these things out for every thing to make sure that yeah. I have my bag absolutely ready. Um, my belt, I, I wear a soft belt, then I wear a hard belt. So I need both of those. Um, elbow sleeves, wrist wraps, mouth guard. That's yep. toe, to, toe to head, all the stuff that I wear. Yep. And then I go to my next one, the deadlift, which is going to be... Do you say knee sleeves? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Some guys is, don't wear knee sleeves. No, and, and that's and that's fine too. And Because they don't know the reason why. And it's warm knees, yeah. better push press. Makes a difference for me. Yep. Um, yep. But I like, say, like for the deadlift, my, like my gear use goes almost to nothing. I need my... My uh, my two belts, my soft belt, my hard belt, and my wrist straps and my mouth guard. Yeah. So then I'll put those things aside. Like th- that's yep. that's my next thing. Yep. Um, for the for the sandbag, I don't really think you need anything besides a pair of shoes, right? Some guys want like to run a soft belt. I yeah. don't recommend a hard belt. No, unless, unless that second bag is really hard for you to yes. pick. Yes. Yeah. Which is which it might be worthwhile, but then I would also ditch the belt when you're getting ready to do the the sled drag because it's yeah. really going to affect your breathing. Oh, absolutely will. Yeah. yeah. So how many guys you see half of you gas and they throw the belt? Yeah. But it's just, you, you're already screwed. You've already not been able to expand that yeah. whole time. And um, here's here's one. So we so we we have the power stairs. What what kit would you recommend for power stairs? I steel steel toe boots, man. Yeah. So start with start with a boot if you have. If not, wear your shoes. But Jan, prime example. Yeah. Short. Yeah. Um. She, if you, if you can gain, guys, if you can gain an extra inch on anything, baby, you, you better, take it. You better take that. Yeah, even if it's the devil's inch. <laughs> um, steel to work boots, best thing for power stairs. You yep. get a probably almost an inch and a half with the sole. Yep. If, and but I also think it's worth it's worth saying too that if you if you haven't been practicing with those, it's gonna be tricky. Probably not the time to introduce them. Yeah. But I think that it was that's something that if if people if and people that's for were, shorter competitors. Yeah, a guy see, like you doesn't need. I wear lifters because because you're standing height, you're already three or four inches above the stair. Yeah, um, where me myself, as soon as we get to when I get up to five hundred pound or the five fifty power stairs, with what it does to my shoulders and pulling me down, I can't get it on. Right, so I have to actually I have to swing. So Gian, we came on did the power stairs the other other week with you guys there, and she was missing the the step by it was like ugh, like an eighth of an inch. It was so it was and, so nothing. And keep in mind, there's a steel plate 
in the center of these that, plates. That's what she was hitting. And it's an eighth of an inch thick, yeah. and it catches on the stair if you don't if you don't you get, like it, up really get it up there. So she was missing yeah. by that much. Yeah. So we're gonna see if we can't find a pair of just like work boots for her to to wear because she's Danielle might even have. Well, there you go. That'd be sweet. What size so. are her feet? Three, three and a half. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> 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 uh, but well, but that's so. Uh, I would wear. <laughs> me personally, I would wear lifters <laughs> if you're tall enough. <laughs> Holy shit! If you're not tall enough, work boots are probably gonna be your friend. And then just a belt, I think. Yeah. Speaking of Jan, did she tell you the joke I sent her Instagram? I don't think so. <sighs> she hasn't fallen for it yet. Okay. She kind of shut me down, which I was very depressed about. Okay. Because I sent her a picture of, or a video of a uh, bulldog on a trampoline. Okay. Bouncing around. It was just the funniest ever. Very cute. And I was trying to do a history lesson for her. But she. Oh, she she did, and I and I and I said he's setting you up, and then she was like, "Fuck this!" And she <laughs> do you know what the answer is? <laughs> no, she didn't know it. No. Oh, please give me. <laughs> I knew it. Why would you say that, Tyler? Because I, I was just sitting there. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I was like, cause she, the message she sent back, I'm like, there's no way she knows. So I, I text her back. I'm like, you know, a trampoline back when it was invented in the 40s or 50s was actually called a jumpoline. Yep. Until her mom jumped on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, he's, he's going to get you. And she's like, no, he's not. And then, that was it. <laughs> and then she shut our conversation down. <laughs> I, was so, I was like, oh, man. Because every time I tell a joke, she, she told me straight here at the Iron Age Cup. At the log press comp? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, she was she was sitting at her table, and you know, Jen's shorter, and she's, oh, there's all these coffee mugs in front of her. And uh, I walk over and, like, separate the coffee mugs, and she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I just figured you couldn't see because, <laughs> and she's like, oh, you just want to start down our shirts, you pervert, or something like that? Like, she, oh, like, I would lit she, you like, up. Holy she shit. She lit me up, or she made some comment about me being a pervert and staring at them, and I'm like, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> she, does that, she does that all the time, too, where she'll be like, like I'll walk by and and be annoying. I'll give her like a like a pat in the back of the head or something. Yeah. And she'll be like, "Don't touch me." And I'll be like, "You can't just say that. Like that's not like funny. Like that's it's it's alarming when people hear that." Yeah. And I'm standing there like, "Fuck!" Like I'm yeah. like a fucking crazy yeah. person. Yeah. She's been putting me in my place lately. Is my joke? So yeah. Jeez, Louise. Yeah. Um. I'll be a little more slick about him. <laughs> so, I think that's pretty much what's what's to be said about the, the yeah lifters. competition is 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 just chalk like, yeah. chalk your hands before you get up. Okay, that's actually that's actually a good one. I would yeah. say is that it's a good bet that wherever you go, they're gonna have chalk, yeah, you know, salts if that's your thing, whatever. But it's never, never, never a bad idea just to bring your own. Yeah, like it's really you should really just have a Tupperware container, a little snap container, or whatever that you have a block of chalk in that you just carry around with you everywhere. Lots of guys rolling with a, zip, a Tupperware container, yeah, chalk, um, sniffing salts. Is there two main ones? Yeah, tacky. and then some guys even leave their uh, their uh, wrist straps, not their wraps, their wrist straps. Yeah. In there, full of chalk, so it helps so grip just, the bar. Just keeps it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I like, see some guys doing that. Like Jeffers, I remember has like a like a stone kit, basically. Like he probably big, puts his deadlift suit in there just to try probably, to get yeah, extra. Just get nice yeah, tacked up. Yeah, nice yeah. and stiff for him. Helps his seven fifty deadlift nine hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I see he's been riding you hard know, a lot lately. He, he deadlifts more than me, so I can't even. He has been riding you. Ho- I'm I'm I don't know how I'm coming across these posts, but that guy is riding you hard lately. Yeah, we'll just we'll see it. Uh, <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Uh, well, he'll he'll pull me a western. I seen one this morning. Something about something about your deadlift again, and you just commented back like, "Wow, a son of a bitch!" Yeah, yeah that's just, what it was. Yeah, he just keeps giving it to me. <laughs> well, and that's the, that's the shame of this of this uh, this western because I was really hoping for like a Husavel stone or a Conan's wheel because I was like, I can beat Jeffers in that one. I yep. know that much. Um, but anyway, the uh, spe- speaking of that a little bit, the the westerns training. How's it going? It's basically just kind of getting started now. So I had like a little three week wave where I kind of programmed myself to be doing like, uh, kind of getting an idea of the events and getting an idea of like. Are you what... programming yourself now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, you're no longer. Yeah. With... So, oh, okay. and, and no, and it was just it was just a financial choice that I had yep. to make. Things are getting a little, Dude, little snug it... with the, the bank account. So I was with him too. It's not cheap. Yeah, and he's a great coach. Like I, I was with Tom Hibbert. He's a great yeah. coach. But I just needed. A, I and I, and I and I'm choosing to use it as an opportunity, like a positive thing, to be like I can, I can, uh, go ahead first into my own into my own coaching and programming yep. and. and and get to know myself a little better as a lifter, and then make myself a better coach too. I think. Yep. So I'm. I, I gave myself three weeks to kind of feel out some of the events, like say like the Zercher. I wasn't really sure like what would be a heavy weight for that and stuff. So I kind of you know whatever. Like that'll be a, a pretty decent event for me, I think. Um, but now I'm kind of getting into the actual like starting next week is 12 weeks out. So now I'll start actually training for a little bit more. Um, 12 weeks already. Eh? Yeah. That means I'm 12 weeks out of Vita. Yes. It's like. Six weeks out of seven weeks out of Tolstoy, six weeks. Yep. But we're, uh, so the, for Westerns, yeah, it's been, it's like the events for it are, I don't love all of them for, for me, and it's missing some ones that I would like. I think I might have said this before, but like there's no truck pull, there's no throwing. Those are good ones for me. 
Um, I think the Zercher one with the sandbag will be fine for me. But, like, max deadlift, like, there's some guys like Tristan just pulling crazy numbers. Jeffers is pulling crazy numbers. There's a lot of dark horse guys like um, Langelar yep. is getting very close to 800. I think that potentially could pull 800 that day. Um, there's just a ton of guys where it's like if if you're not the guy – like uh, like Jeffers did his uh, his Westerns predictions on his. Is it a deadlift for reps event? Sorry, I missed that. No, deadlift, max deadlift, elephant bar. Holy crap! Or mammoth bar or whatever. Yeah. So um, if you're not a guy who has a strong deadlift, um, there are lots of guys who are. So so Jeffers did his Westerns prediction, and he had his his podium as him, Tristan, Sean, and then me and Colton battling out for fourth, which I thought was kind of surprising. I was like, oh, I, I would have. I personally, I would have put Colton ahead of Sean for that one. Um, it's good events for both of them, but Sean's just coming off of surgery and yeah. injury and stuff. So, and uh, Jefferson was like, "Well, the the deadlift might be a tough one for Golden." And I and I never really thought about that, but there's so many good deadlifters in this. Yes, there's so many guys who will be right at or above that 800 pound mark, or well above it. Like if you're talking about guys like Tristan and Jeffers, um, and it's how many people they can put between them, right? And the guy who's not a great it's deadlifter. Big points, man. So yeah. th- that could be that could really be an important event. Yeah. So uh, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I can really show up that day with a big strong deadlift because there's a lot of Suited? guys who are definitely going to. No, I think it's I believe it's a it's just a strong man raw. <clears throat> so that'll be that'll make it a little more interesting, I think. I, I like I don't have a problem with suited deadlifts. Um as long as everyone's like you know, if everyone can use them or no one can use them, it's all the same to me. Yep. But I do love not having to train with one. That's a lot better. But what's Tristan hit his last deadlift that suited or unsuited? That was without a suit. That was okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Pretty, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Do we have any nine hundred pound non suited pullers in the West or no? Uh, no, without a suit, I don't believe so. Well, uh, not strong man. I don't know. Not like I'm sure powerlifting we do. Yeah, I'm sure there's guys out there. But I don't know. I don't know if there is. I, yeah, I, 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 I think that Tristan would be about as close as we as we have right now, and he's right there. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, the, uh, the only the only thing that I'll say is that I would disagree with uh, with Jeffers's predictions, and I think they're pretty spot on. I think Tristan might win this year. <laughs> I think, and, and that's not a slight to Jeffers because Jeffers is he knows he trust me Jeffers knows how good how good he is. Yeah, but uh, I think that Tristan is really. I like them both. I, I like them both to win, but I yeah. but I but I think that this is a good competition for for Tristan. Um, if we're looking at, um, uh, sorry, I'm trying to remember what the events are off the top of my head. Like this, these aren't the order, but there's the Dinny rings. Yep. Both of them have great grips. Both of them have really big hands. So it's going to be a weird event yep. for them in both for both of them like that. But if we go back to Magnus, if I'm correct, Tristan won the farmers. No, he didn't have to win the farmers. He didn't have to. Yeah. And that was, but that was, and that's also more of a straight up grip test. Yes. This one's a very interesting sort of grip where it's less to do with, uh, not nothing to do with grip, obviously, yep. but less to do with grip as much as it has to do with like pain tolerance. And especially when you're talking about guys who have huge mitts like Tristan and Jeffers, those rings really dig in in a weird way into your that, knuckles. Yes. Um, so that's going to be an interesting one. Um, but that could go either way. I, I can see either guy taking that one. Um, the yoke, Tristan's a fucking great yoke runner. Really, really yeah. good. And I could see him taking that one and winning it. Um, the log press for reps, both of them are really good. I think Tristan's a little better. Um, and if we're going into the, the stuff after that, um, the front hold. I mean, who the fuck knows? That could be a, like. Yeah. I, th- I think that we're gonna see a guy who win that. Where it's just like they. they it's gonna be one of the bottom five guys yeah, who's I, got I, a pain tolerance like there's no tomorrow. I, I, or short, you know, the short arm guy, yeah. whatever. I think I think that that was gonna be a, a really weird monkey. That's wrench. always one that can just completely toss the standings. Yeah. Yeah. I think the deadlift will be very close, but I do think that Tristan has it by a little bit. Um, and the the Zercher sandbag could go to could go but to either he, guy. Is it max deadlift? You pick your weight or rising bar by forty pound type thing. I don't know if that's been made clear. Yet. Because if it's rising bar. Like in increments, a guy Trist Jeffers Tristan's a slightly better deadlifter. But if it's not, if it's the, if they both can deadlift eight fifty, but neither can deadlift nine hundred. But Tristan can get eight ninety. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He might fail at nine hundred, and yeah. they both got the eight fifty. Yeah, but Jeffers saves some energy. That's true. Like, yep. and that happens yep. with that rising bar. Yeah. It's a really. It'll be really interesting to see. Um, I, th- I, f- I can't remember if I'm if I'm forgetting an event. I don't think that I am. But it's I I, I think that it'll be a fucking really really fun war, and I I hope that this is um. Like a streamed or or recorded event, whatever. Cause I would I, hope I, so. I really think that this is going to be, especially between those two guys. I think that we're gonna that's gonna be one where it's like like fans of strongman will be like, this is like a next level sort of yep. rivalry that we're starting to see here, um, uh, and it'll be it'll be really really fun to see. I hope it's live stream. I I, tr- I really I'll hope be so running too. the Vita show, but it would be nice to still have a screen just going have that I can going watch. On. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Watch some stuff. I know I know that Thrones will bring. I'll give them the the monitor I have over here so we can have a a, a tri screen going so we can have the westerns going on on it. But it's is he be... coming out? Is he sticking around for yes, Vita? Yeah. So he'll be live streaming Vita still? I believe so, yeah. yeah. I, I haven't confirmed that with him yet, but I do think so. Um, so that's going to be 
It's going to be wild. It's That'd be, be wild. actually wild to actually stream that while we got to Vitacom going too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> stream 105s, stream Westerns. That would be Like sick. the 105 Canada's Westerns and and then have those screens up at Vita while yeah, we're yeah. doing it. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, it'll be uh It'll be a fun one, and I'm just hoping that I can uh, play spoiler on enough stuff that I can get in there and get that get that uh, you know third or fourth place would be would be just lovely. Um, another thing I want to get into too before we before we think we're wrapping up for today was uh, on Saturday, myself, Thrones, uh, Martin, and uh, I'm just picking somebody else from Strongman, Andrew Langelar, He was there too. Uh, we're all at the the vaults. Uh, Bench till you dead competition. Yeah, I see a bunch of girls from Snap came out. Yeah, it was awesome. Hey, or... shout out to those two girls from Snap because yeah. they fucking rock, man. They, yeah. they, they went. To, so what it was was that it was just a push pull competition, uh, exhibition, we'll call it. Um, very much in the vein of Deadlift for Dreams or the Charity Log or whatever. Um, super fun. The the vault is a, is a very it's a it's a small little private facility, but they made it really work for this, and it was really really great. Um, they raised some money for the Canine Advocacy yep. Group and. I dropped 50 bucks in their thing. I was happy to do that, and uh, it was great. Um, uh, those two Snap Steinback girls, they showed up. Um, they're green as grass. Like they, don't, oh, yeah. they, have no, they don't really know what they're doing with it and stuff, but they're just having a good time. They both had a great, like, they both pressed, like, one pressed, like 135 and one yeah, pressed, Mar- like, 120 or something Marissa like that. Marissa has seen a 300 yeah, deadlift. Yeah, she's really strong. And uh, they both pulled 260. And it was easy, like yeah. nothing. And they just, they just, they just didn't know how to pick their weights, whatever, right? They're like, "Oh, we both started deadlifting last week." And I was like, "Jesus Christ!" I like, I wasn't pulling three hundred pounds when yeah. I first started yeah. deadlifting. <laughs> so I, I went up to them and I was like, "Hey, if you guys want, like, me and Martin are going to go train at Iron Age after this. If you guys want to come and hit like an actual max, yeah, like you're more than welcome to." And then to her credit, Taylor was just like, "If anybody wants to hit a, a heavy single now that we're kind of done with the thing, like, please by all means load it up and do it." So, um, uh, Bell is the other one's name, Bella. She hits. Um, like 275, and then Marissa hit like 300. Yeah. And again, like both of them, I would call it like a, like a 9 out of, 10, out of 10 maybe. So it wasn't yeah. like a complete gut buster. And also, uh, nothing but respect to you two ladies, but their technique is dog shit. <laughs> so they have, they have so much room to improve. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And, so, and then they did come here afterwards, and they both – uh, benched more than they benched at the competition. Like just, I just with some, I just love form these, tweaks. these beginner gains. You yep. know what I mean? Like they just came here and they and she and the the uh, Bella hit more here than she hit at the thing there. Isn't that nice? You just improving the same day. Oh. <laughs> like, you remember those days when, when your technique changed? And you hit a twenty pound PR because I don't. I, yeah, maybe I'm getting old. A long time ago. Yeah, but I yeah, turn my peck on a <clears throat> moderate seven out of ten press. <laughs> I just I love I, I love talking to them and then and them just being like oh yeah we just started doing this last week and decided to jump in on a competition yeah. I was like they were both supposed to do the novice show and they bailed oh oh okay well then they I were both it. coming to my gym and training with Bushi oh I take back everything nice I said and uh, and they both bailed so yeah, that, take back everything nice I said shame but, but you can get it back shame. if you do Tolstoy which they were talking about doing were they yep so I already had some people from the novice show reaching out about Tolstoy great that's exactly what we want is which to get is, that retention yeah um. They're also talking about doing something else that's coming up, which is the WRPF meet coming up at Cornerstorm Barbell. Um, looking forward to my man Scotty, who's uh, this to be his first time competing in powerlifting. Um, he's a, a masters lifter who I think will be looking at somewhere like a 450 bench for him. I think it's more than that. Yeah, like he's, dude, he, he just I watched that he triple he did. <laughs> yeah, he's a monster. He's uh, and he's like we, I think I talked about him before, but he is built to bench press. Very excited to see what we can pull off for that one for him. I so, think that guy hit somewhere in the four seventies. I think that's perfectly reasonable to expect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's just it's kinda it's kinda whatever he whatever he thinks he can do is whatever, whatever yeah. he's gonna do. Like and he's got the old man in grinding strength. Yeah, which, absolutely. Yeah, nothing stops. Nope. It yeah. just moves a little slower. <laughs> it, just, it just goes until it doesn't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He uh yeah, no, he that that's so that'll be awesome. I'm looking forward to that. I told both those girls they should sign up for that one too, because they, yeah. they wanted to do some sort of powerlifting meet and I said, Hey, nice. this is the one to do if you're gonna do a powerlifting meet nice. in Manitoba. Um so we're looking forward to that one. Um. Uh, yeah. So the the vault thing we we did. Uh, it was a push pull. I wasn't. I honestly, I, I showed up that day feeling like ah, I just I'll I'll load. I don't really feel like yeah. doing anything. And then Thrones was like, "Why don't you just bench press?" And I was like, "You're right." So then I did. I I benched. What did you hit? Oh fucking nothing. I I I did three forty five, three seventy, and then I went for four hundred. And they were like, "What? What?" <laughs> and this is you can call this whatever you want, excuses or whatever. But <laughs> when I got up to the bar, they were like four oh five, and I was like. Yeah, sure. And I missed it by a fucking oh, hair. No. I think that if I had four hundred on the bar, I actually would have gotten it. So I was like, motherfuckers. <laughs> but I, but I, they, they gored, you, they gored Grim off the shoot. Yes, they <laughs> did. Yeah, except for I couldn't, I didn't have the balls like Gord did to make it happen. So, um, and then that motherfucker Langelar 
just slides in from behind spotting me and just bangs out a rep, puts on 30 more pounds, bangs out a rep. So don't think I've forgotten that angle, Andrew Langler. I have not <laughs> forgotten that. And I'm looking very much forward to having an opportunity in Strongman to show you who fucking, who's Papo over here. <laughs> Speaking of that, I know that we were, you were, you weren't sure if you had something for, for Manitoba's Strongest Man and Woman today. Did yeah. You, did you decide on anything for that or? <sighs> No, no. Okay. I have, I have, I, I, I'm, I'm debating on the pressing event, um, because we need a press. I don't want to see Viking. Eh, it's whatever. I agree. Um, I think, I think that what, what, what I'll, I'll decide. No, I'm debating between two. Okay. Um, because we've done Max Log every year. Yes. I don't I want that out. Um, Axel Cleaner Press. Yeah, I always hate that event, which doesn't matter. But I just, for the crowd, it's I want to see, debating between two, two and two right now. Okay. Max Circus Dumbbell. Okay. Or uh, Max Block Press. Nice. I like both those. I like and I like those because I, you know, what Thrones put it really well. Where odd object. Yes, where he said he's like the the bench press is a really cool idea, yeah. but being on a track, it's really a test of like raw strength, which yeah. is cool. But strongman is so much about like your technique, your practice, yeah. all that stuff that he he kind of because because I said to him I was like yeah we have a press and then he kind of put it that way and I was like yeah you know what you and Devin are right where it's like we do need that second yeah like a strongman press yeah you know what I mean because it's because you got to be that way you can you can show that you're good at the sport of strongman and not just yeah. able to apply force you, you know, know I, I, mean? I think thinking about it um and I know I've had messages Hold on. Are, you, are you about to pick it yeah okay here we go yeah uh event three Manitoba strongest man and woman 2024 in Morris Manitoba is Max Circus Dumbbell. Max Circus Dumbbell. Wow, that's gonna make it, <laughs> that's gonna make some people really unhappy. <laughs> I, I, I was just I had some DMs recently. You better not choose a Max Circus Dumbbell, and I'm like, ah, you know. But I was just thinking about that is one event block press. There's only two of us have blocks. Right. You have one, and I have one. Right. The home built. Right. Um, not a lot of access to it. Hard to hard to uh, hard to learn if you don't have access, and a high injury chance if you don't have a chance to practice it. Sure. Um, that's the only reason I wouldn't throw it in for that one. That's fair. Especially for a max. I was just thinking, ah, it's, it's, it's awkward, clean, and when you press, it falls behind you. I know Theodore last year got smoked in the back. With, with the natural stone. Yeah, yeah or with very, natural but, stone. But very similar idea, yeah, though. And, yeah, and uh, yeah. I think you we've... His finger, too. On yeah, the, yeah. We've never done a max circus dumbbell. I know, Dan, you're going to hate me. Uh, I'm sure Pat's going to hate me. There's several guys who now hate me. Dan loves I, circus dumbbell. Does he? Oh, yeah. Because you're a good circus dumbbell presser, too, Not if I'm right. Dan. Okay, that's yeah, going to be interesting. This, this could be Dan's to yeah. take, honestly. Um, yeah. So Max Circus Dumbo. Two press events is cool. We always do two move events. You know what? Let's I do like two it. static events. I like yeah. I, I think that I've hit, in training, I've hit 215, I think. And he's at 220 for a triple. Dude, I've never done over 155 or 160. Really? Yeah. But that's, it, was, I, it was never in comps back Cir in the day. Circus Dumbo is one of those ones that yeah. the explosion of weight has been insane. And yeah. almost to the point where it gets to be a little bit of an issue sometimes because, like, your shoulder joint in that position is... It's we, 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 so we think vulnerable. about, like, Tamara. Yeah. Uh, that's why she got hurt is because she was like, I think I got this, and then all of yeah. a sudden it's just pop and a little too yeah. far and whatever. But, hey, train hard. Practice it. If you need technique help with it, uh, and I'm sure I speak for Devin when I say hit one of us up, and we're happy yeah. to make sure that everybody who, who, who wants to sign up for Manitoba's Strongest Woman, man and woman, can do it safely and efficiently. It's really, really important. But uh, that's a great event. That's going to be really, really fun. Now that we're talking Circus Dumbo, any of you guys listening, and I'll ask you, um, I'm looking for a woman Circus Dumbo. I need to buy one for my gym. Okay. I have nothing light enough for women. Who, who's, did we use Valkyrie the used to, Va uh, Gord had a Valkyrie one, or Muriel. Oh. And I sold to Gord. I need to buy one. So, okay. Jeffers, whoever lists the show from across the, the world, send me suggestions to my Instagram page, Devin Penner. DM me um, on who makes a good woman Circus Dumbo. Even like, if like, I don't know if Peacock or Bellevue or any of them listen. All the girls that listen, what what dumbbell do you and guys like pressing with? Andrew made those ones that they use. Andrew from uh, from Ontario. Oh, okay, will be finest. Okay, because I need. I, need I was some. talking to him, and, we're, and I know he listens, so we'll yeah. we, we, we might need to further our conversation that we had. Send me some suggestions. I need to buy one, and, I, and I'll pull the trigger on it. If you send me a good one next week, I'll pull the trigger next week. I'm not love it. Yeah, that's a very exciting event. Uh, I know somebody who's vying for Manitoba's strongest woman will be very happy with that one too. Oh yeah, Anna. Oh, she's a good circus. Well, wow, she's explosive with the one That's her shit, dude. Yeah, she just she just hit uh, she hit ninety pounds here. Uh, yeah. Yes, yesterday or the day before. Yeah. And I, I she, she just couldn't like she we couldn't figure out the big dumbbell on her shoulder just wouldn't sit properly. But a little bit of practice with that, I think that she could be potentially getting that. That's wild. She's a a very very good uh, overhead presser, and she's and uh, at Western Can at Western Can or was it strongest woman in the West? I think they're calling it yeah. right. That's going to be uh, that. Uh, Behind the neck press is going to be a very good one for us. Nice. So I'm very excited for that. No, that'll be fun. 
Awesome. Okay, there you go. That's the. I wasn't sure if we were going to get one because Devin said he was kind of hemming and hawing about what he was going to pick for this last one. Yeah. So we're three events in. Three events. We're, we're, are we doing a six event, five event? What are you thinking? I think five event. Five event. Okay. Yeah. So we got five. We got two more events. So over the next couple of weeks, you're going to find them out. I'm finding them out with you too here. Yep. So, um, it's a it's an exciting time for Manitoba Strong Man. Um, what do we have for time here now? Yeah, we should probably shut her down. Yeah. Devin's got to get going here. To get to. Devin's got to go go get Dean off the highway. Or yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> Before we leave, Jeremy Weens Realtor. Oh, of course. Got to let it say our boy. We should say at the beginning, but we'll say at the end. We'll right. say at the end because this is when everybody's really like gripped by what we've been saying the whole time, yep. and they're really paying close attention to everything that comes out of our mouth. Hit him up for all your uh, realtor needs. Yep. Opinion values, whatever he needs, sell your house, buy a house. He'll help you with anything, really, across the province. Yep. He's yep. the man. Um, um, we, we, we set some goals, me and him, on Monday. Uh, some weight loss goals because I'm trying to you – know, if, if nice. I want to lose some weight and get healthier. I've got some issues from the doctor I've got to get rid of, so – we both have a weight loss goal by June thirtieth, and if we don't hit it, um, the deal was uh, we each have to run a five k. Wow! I've never ran more than a mile. In, I ran a mile leading into my boxing fight, one mile. Wow! I really hope you don't make that weight. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jeremy's, you know, Jeremy's. Well, we don't get into his stuff, but what's your what's your goal for that? Both of us have to lose sixteen pounds. Sixteen pounds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's in the, three that's, months. That's attainable. Yeah, it's attainable. It's it's, uh, it's it's a it's on the on the face of it, it's it's actually it would be easy if you had nothing else going on in your life. Yes, that's the thing. Yeah. Right, your yeah. guy who has a lot going on makes it very challenging <laughs> to get your to get your meals in properly and, and all yeah. That today, stuff, so. today I didn't leave my desk. Uh, I ate a cranked energy bar in the parking lot. Was when I ate. Haven't had nothing. I had a protein shake for breakfast, and I haven't left because I knew my day was tight. I literally didn't leave my desk. So I just went to the washroom. The life of an entrepreneur, my <laughs> yeah, friend. Yeah, like it was ridiculous. Um. Oh, and just sorry, just to put a cap on what we we're talking about before there. Yeah. Uh. So shout out to uh, to Taylor Smith from the Vault for putting on uh, a great event yes. there, and I, and I hope that becomes a yearly event that we can all just do in Manitoba and just cycle through the same way we do all the other yep. charity stuff. Great way to get people involved in the sport. A bunch of new f- people there that I'd never seen uh, lift weights before, so it was fantastic to see all these new faces. And hopefully, next year I'll bring like a fucking business card or something with a strong Manitoba on it and start handing those. Out. Yes, the same way that I'm going to do at Festival de Voyager. Yep. Uh, okay, so we'll leave it at that for today. Um, just to give a quick, really fast blast uh, this Saturday. Training Grounds Gym. Come check it out. Come watch. Um, if you have someone competing, come cheer them on. Free entrance. I know people are mastering me how much to get in. It's free. Free unless you don't like you, and then it's $10. Yeah. Um, so, no, it's free entry for that. Um, on uh, June 8th. That's the next thing, right? Well, so, uh, yeah, June 8th. Yeah. Am I missing something? No. Well, April 27th, we have Battle of the Barbarians 3 with some of our guys going out for that one there. So Tolstoy, if you're... May 25th. Thank you. We have... Uh, <laughs> so... We have Battle Barbarians for some of our guys. We're looking forward yep. to that one. We're going to do a little, little quick trip to Saski. You got a couple guys. Lane's doing it too. Yep. Oh, great. So we yep. got we got Lane, Martin, Jeremy, and Nate doing that one. Nice. So we're looking forward to, to getting out there and competing. Um, and then on May 25th, we have Tolstoy. Uh, we're very used to it by now. The registration starts off very slow for these things, and we see kind of a blast towards the back end. Yeah. But it would be really helpful to us if you guys could get – if you plan on getting signed up, do it now so we can get an idea of like our shirt orders and all that stuff that we have yep. to make sure that we get ready for it. The events will be posted uh, for sure by the time that this that this hits the air. Yes, I think, right? yeah, they were supposed to be yesterday. Hey, but you know, I, I had them. Yeah. If you don't like it, fuck you. <laughs> oh, <shit>. We <laughs> haven't had that for a whole episode. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we uh, we it, it should be up by the time that this is this episode is up. Yeah. Um, but get signed up, guys, and we're and we're, we're looking forward to that one. It's gonna be a really fun one. <clears throat> June eighth, we have Manitoba Strongest Man and Woman in Morris. Um, registration for that one is open now, I guess, officially, right? Yeah. Yeah. Officially yep. open for that one. So get yourself signed up. We have three of the events an- <clears throat> announced. And I think that we'll probably kind of do the same thing where once we announce all five events, we'll start banging out weights yep. for them, right? Yep. That makes sense. Yep. Um, so we'll start keeping your eyes your eyes and ears open for that right here on Strong and Petty. Um, following that, we got uh, Pat's at, at CSM 105. Me, Dan, and um, and Langelar are going to be at uh, Western's. Um, Later on in the month, or sorry, early into the next month, we got uh, Magnus Magnus show yep. August Long Gimli. Get out there, go to that one. It's a really, really great show. Yep, but, uh, that's the one that Devin does with the Magnus group on his own, and it's uh, they they just knock it out of the park every time. It's such a fun competition. It's going to be a really, really stiff competition this year, so it's going to be a great spectator uh, day out there. Yeah. Um, uh, August tenth, we have provincials in Winkler. And um, really quick, fast, I want I, b- b- before we go, for Manitoba Strongest Man, I want to shout out some of our sponsors. We have Intergalactic Hot Sauce, who's jumped on. Yes. They're awesome. FirstRowCollectibles.ca. They, uh, they're, they're an online store that also have a brick and mortar here in, in Main Street, on Main Street in Winnipeg. Um, Indigenous-owned uh, company, yep. great guy. Love Curtis, and I've they've known, been supporting us for a couple they, of years. They're amazing, and I've and yeah. I've known I've known Curtis for for twelve years now, and he's one of the most stand-up guys that I that I've ever met. 
and uh, I strongly encourage checking him out in the store. Um, Supplement King is always is always on our back with that stuff, or always has our back not on our back. Yeah, yeah. has our back with that stuff, and then of course the big dogs, Flatland Diesel. We, we yes. can't thank them enough for for yep. everything that they do. Brandon Strats, yeah, look them yeah. up. Yeah. So uh, with that, we'll leave it for for this week. See you guys in training grounds on Saturday. Follow, and- like, subscribe to our YouTube. Yep. Get yep. us up there. Yep. We've we've seen a nice little boost in our in our yep. views the last little bit, so let's keep that rolling. Share with your friends. Yep. If we mention someone's name that you like or don't like, send it to them. Let them know. Let, tell them that we're talking about them. Yeah. And uh, get us an extra view. Okay. Uh, thanks, guys.